Hey YouTube, this is Leo with Remodeling Calculator, and in this video, I'll quickly show you how we're troubleshooting this Quadra Fire um, gas fireplace, gas insert. So this is a very old unit. Um, I would guess it's probably like 25, 30 years old, maybe a little less, but old. Okay. So first things first, we had issues getting the pilot going. This here is a thermal couple. Okay. This is a thermal pile. Okay. So the thermal couple. The skinny guy, it keeps the pilot going, okay? And you can see the flame is barely touching it. So I think we need to adjust the angle on it. And uh, yeah, we're having a hard time um, getting the even the pilot flame going, okay? And the thermal couple, I mean thermal pile, that's what that's for a self-powered um, gas flame. So basically, while the gas flame is on, it heats up the thermal pile. It generates electric charge, sends it right over here, and keeps the gas valve open. So there's, there is a pilot flame, which is using that silver uh, gas line that go, that's going to the pilot. And then there's the main gas line right here, and this brings the big flame. And so there are two different, basically, essentially valves inside of it. And uh, the pilot is powered by the thermal couple, and the main flame by thermal pile. So the difference is, like, they generate... 10 times the voltage difference. Okay, and uh, so what I did is I opened it up, I removed all the fake logs. Here's Here they are. And uh, so I think it's a good idea at this point to kind of bring the thermal pile in a little bit. I mean, thermal couple. I mean, we can clearly see that it's working because it keeps the pilot going, all right? But if I try to turn this on, it may or may not work. Like this, my switch is over here on the wall. And so the problem is likely in the switch or the high limit, which is somewhere over there. <laughs> and so to make to how do we test it? All right, so the way we test it is with the jumper cable. So you see this red wire, so this goes to the switch. So one end comes here, one is here. The switch break, breaks the circle, and also the high limit breaks the circle. Sir, I mean the circuit. So if we jump this directly, there you go. And so this tells us that the thermal couple is good, and the thermal pile is good, and that we have a problem with our switch or our high limit. Okay, and that's actually very good. That means that our valve is good. Uh, what we can do is basically clean off the burning residue on the thermal couple. The thermal pile, which is the fat guy right here, that's pretty new. I replaced it because I thought I think the old one was bad. All right, so the good thing is we don't have to replace the gas valve, which would be a massive pain. The reason is, you can see, it's hard piped in there. And the hard pipe goes deep inside the chimney and goes straight down. So the valve, shadow valve, is really far away. And uh, it's actually not good. And it's pretty much impossible to access it without um, basically breaking a wall underneath the stairs right there. <laughs> and getting in from the from this side but on the bottom to access that pipe. And uh, so I was what I was going to do is... It looks like it's double threaded, so technically I could get a, the gas wrench and uh, unpipe it, but it's still a massive pain redoing all the, this whole thing. I would much rather not have to do it. Basically, it's a good thing that the problem is not in the valve itself, and we can confirm that thermal couple and thermal pile actually work fine. Because if one of them was bad, we would not have flame. <laughs> all right. To get to the thermal couple. We would still have to mess with the gas well because you can see the copper uh, line right over there. So that swirls around and goes to the back of the valve. And uh, <laughs> to get to it, I either have to take part of this whole assembly on the top, all the burners, and get to it from the back, which might be possible. Yeah, I mean, it would be a massive pain to basically replace the thermal couple. Again, all you need to do to test that the valve is good. Let's do this, connect 
the two leads that, that go to the switches. So the same thing if I connect these two screws right here. It lights right up. But the switch, for some reason, is not working. My switch, this is a fan switch, and the fan is not connected right here. And there's high and the low, but the fire switch is what the problem is. Well, at least we know that the system works, and if like my power goes out, I have heat without even electricity. So we're going to do some maintenance right now. We're going to figure out why the switch is not on or not working. So the switch is over here on the side. We're also going to send down or clean the thermal couple. So this wide and move this log. Okay, so we have 150 grit paper here. We're just going to gently Let's light the pilot. Hold it in for about 15-20 seconds until the thermal couple warms up and then we'll be able to release the pilot light and turn it on. on. Okay, so you let it go a little bit, leave it on on. Okay, now you can see there's a better contact with flame. Flame is actually touching the thermocouple. We have good spark. I'm not sure if you can see the spark. Anyway, it's going to take a little bit of time before the thermal pile warms up. Show this. Nope, still cold. It's just gonna basically light up when it warm when the thermal pile warms up. So again, the thermal pile is the fat guy over there. So this is a thermal pile. This is a thermal couple, and the difference between them, basically, this generates, this one generates ten times the voltage of this one. So if this is like twenty-five millivolts or thirty millivolts, that's like uh, not ten, but uh, thirty times. So this is like seven fifty millivolts. So almost a full volt. And these two devices, they're ingenious because the heat generates the electricity in them, and that electricity is enough to keep the gas valve open. And basically, this is a self-sufficient system. So even if your power goes out, like you see, this thing is not plugged in. But uh, you're, you're going to have light even if the power goes out. Meaning you're going to have heat. There's going to be flame. Even if when you don't have power from the grid, like you don't need electricity to run this heating system. And when I say heating, like it actually has a fan that can really heat up this whole space. But even without any, without the blower working, it's actually still pretty warm just from the um, radiant heat. No, come on. By the way, while we're at it, we can measure the voltage. We can measure the voltage on the thermal pile. Put this on volts. I'll turn on the light for you. Okay, and it's uh, thousands of a volt. We just need to select uh, Okay, there you go, a flame. 
All right, so we have DC electricity. Have only 370 millivolts. Oh, okay, so the millivolts drop because the system, well, part of it is going actually to the valve to keep it open. All right, so it actually needs to be measured when not connected to the valve. So, for example, if I unscrew this lead here. Now, if I measure the voltage between the two, it's still 370. That is weird. Okay. So that's completely disconnected. It's weird. That's a weak thermal pile. Okay, maybe we need to replace it. Although it's new, but this is like cheap Chinese stuff from Amazon. So you gotta get your thermopiles from plumbing supply, not from Amazon. And it's doing the job ever so slightly. Anyway, slide it up. Okay, so we have the flame if we jump it. But now let's see if our switch works. If the switch is the problem. So it is the switch. Because when we when we short these two guys, everything is still working. That means our um, our high limit is working. It's not disabled or anything like that. Like maybe it will turn shut off if it overheats. But uh, right now it's not open. It's closed right now. So you see. Just connect this. So it's got to be the switch. So let's work on the switch. Let me remove it and I uh, will test it. Such an annoying switch, guys. <laughs> I think the problem is the switch. It's connected. Yeah, it's definitely the switch. See, nothing happens. Whereas when we short circuit these two leads. All right. So, okay guys, we found our problem. This is working. All right, so basically what we learned from this, if my electricity goes out and I need heat, all I need to do is this, because I know that right now my high limit is working fine. While I'm getting switched, I still have backup heat for at least this section of the house. All right, and this is how you troubleshoot your um, yes, fireplace. Now, this is an old beast. It's like 25, 30 years old. I don't even know when it was made. But it doesn't matter. The, the principle, the way it works is actually pretty similar. Even with modern, like, expensive fireplaces, they just have two exhaust pipes versus one. But uh, the principle, it's working is the same. You have thermal pile to open the main flame and thermal couple to keep the pilot light going. So if the thermal couple is bad, then your pilot is not going to work. And if your pilot is not running, unless you're holding the pilot uh, button, that means that your thermal couple is bad and you need to replace it. Now, replacing thermal couple on this, at least on this machine, oops, is a massive pain because the whole valve has to come out and a lot of damage can be done during that. So um, it's great that it's actually working fine. 
There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Please click like if you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.